What's up guys, Coach Mandler here. In today's video, I'm gonna go into great detail about one of my all-time favorite exercises for not just your lower body like many would think, but also your upper body as well when you're doing it right. Talking about the kettlebell goblet squat. And what we're gonna discuss with today's video is the benefits of doing it, the different cues that help you maximize your efficiency and your return on investment when doing it properly, the different ways to hold it, as well as the different things you can add to it to get even more out of the exercise itself. So without further ado, let's go into today's deep dive on the kettlebell goblet squat. Okay, now let's first discuss the real benefits of doing a kettlebell goblet squat. First thing you notice when doing a kettlebell goblet squat is that it's an interior loaded exercise. What I mean by that is it is loaded in the front instead of the back. So let's say you're doing a barbell back squat. That's typically going to be, depending upon where on your back uh, that bar is loaded, mainly going to be a posterior dominant squat. This being an interior loaded is going to hit obviously your glutes and hamstrings as well, but it's going to overload your quads. That's the obvious point of doing all squat variations that are loaded anteriorly like the goblet squat is. But on top of that are the teaching benefits that it offers. What I mean by that is this, that anterior load while squatting will force you or via the, the weight being where it's at, will want to pull you forward into thoracic flexion, okay? So you have to actively retract and depress your scapula, which I call uh, packing your shoulders in order to prevent that. That in conjunction with keeping your core tight is a fantastic way to not only work your core and back, but also learn proper squat mechanics that allow you to not just focus the movement itself um, on the lower half, but also teach you how to properly activate musculature of your upper body as well. So not only will it hit your quads more, for those out there that want to build bigger quads on top of glutes and hamstrings the way a normal squat will, but it's also a great teaching tool to properly teach um, tensioning in your upper body during a squat, as well as helps develop stronger core and upper back via anti-thoracic flexion work. Okay, now let's discuss the cues you'll need to properly execute the goblet squat so that you not only get the most out of it from the strength and overall performance side of it, but also prevent injury that could lead to you being out for a while. Um, and just, just so you know, uh, regardless of what type of goblet squat you do, this and all the cues that you're going to hear me say are going to be universal. So everything that I discuss right now can be parlayed into every type of goblet squat that you do. So without further ado, let's discuss our stance, our, our proper scapular placement, um, your standard grip with just a regular old goblet squat, uh, breathing mechanics, initiation, as well as how to properly execute the concentric or lift portion of the exercise itself. So first things first, your stance. I like just right, you know, either right underneath your shoulder width or uh, maybe a little bit wider, nothing too wide because what happens with a squat, if you're too wide, when you get into proper depth, what's gonna happen is your knees are gonna cave in, which is not what you want. That's gonna you know, lead to possible injury and at the very least, muscular imbalance. So good, good, uh, strong athletic stance, either at or slightly beyond shoulder width. From there, we'll just do a standard goblet squat, holding horns here. Here, what I'm doing is I'm packing my shoulders. What I mean by that is I'm retracting and depressing them so that my core as well as my lats are helping to insulate my spine so that it's not just my legs doing the work, but it's also my upper body that's helping keep my spine safe and powerful throughout the movement itself. So from here, what I wanna do once I'm in that good, proper packed position with my shoulders, I wanna take deep belly breath in, tighten my core, track my hips back slightly, then drop, 
keeping my chest up, and I'm going to keep my heels down. I'm going to push my knees out and then drive my heels through the ground. And what's going to happen with my breath is once I get about, about three quarters of the way up, that is when I'm going to forcefully exhale. So let me do it just in like a couple reps regular here. Pack my shoulders, deep belly breath. Stay tight. Right there. So again, solid stance. Retract the press your shoulder blades, your scapula. Keep your core tight to help insulate your spine. Take that deep belly breath in. Hold it. Hips back slightly. Drop. Chest up. Boom. Breathe out as you come about three quarters of the way up. All right, one quick note about the teachability of this movement itself. A lot of people, when they're learning how to properly squat, they can't kick this notion that a squat in, in, in itself is just you're squatting down. That's not the case. What you have to understand about the squat is it's a hinge initiated movement that ends with your femurs parallel, or if you're, you, know, you have really good mobility, uh, below parallel and driven by that extension of your hips at the top. So um, the, the, the worst thing I see people make a mistake of doing is they initiate the movement by having their knees move forward, which ultimately, the further you go down, you know, as you're doing that, lifts your heels off the ground. Your joints aren't stacked there, and it's just a recipe for uh, overall just poor performance on the squat, but more importantly, big time possibility of knee injury. So in order to prevent that, I like to get people to do what's called a goblet box squat. Really simple, it's just a regular goblet squat. You know, so it's anterior loaded, which forces them to keep tension in their torso, like such. But because they're squatting onto a box, it forces them to initiate the movement by tracking their hips back. So track your hips back, lower, knees out, heels down, boom, accelerate up. Hips back, knees down, or sorry, knees out, heels down. And if you notice, what's going on here is that by forcing them to squat to a box, you're eliminating their ability to just squat straight down. You're forcing them to initiate the movement by sending their hips back before they lower them. All right, so if you have a tendency when squatting to have your heels come up and knees move forward, that is one of the simplest ways to fix that while also preventing the possibility of uh, immediate or long-term injury to your knees. So, goblet box squats. Fantastic way to auto-correct your poor squat form. Now, because variety is the spice of life, and I don't want you to get too bored with just sticking with one type of goblet squat as your fundamental kettlebell squat movement, let's discuss some of the different ways that you can grip the kettlebell itself while doing the goblet squat. Now, you already saw me do what I believe is, is the, the simplest way to do a goblet squat, and that is gonna be by using the horns as your handle. So, what we have here is I'm using the folds in my hand right here to pinch up against the bottom base of the bell and the horns as they kind of veer out into that handle. So, what you get is this kind of pinch position, which I will then grab like this, all right? This gives me complete control um, and overall just a very comfortable position that forces activation of my core and lats to prevent any of that thoracic flexion that we want to prevent. And also is a great balanced way to get a good goblet squat. Now, that in my mind is probably the, the, the simplest way to do it. There are three other that I'm also a big fan of. Next, we'll discuss what a lot of people also do, which is kind of a, a cradle or a crush grip position. That is, uh, you kind of get it right here, and you basically just cradle it 
in your palms like such. Still gives you a good bit of control. I'm not a huge fan of this compared to grabbing the horns just because I feel like, let's say you're sweating your ass off during a workout, this doesn't give you as much control. Not to mention when you're done, you kind of have to, you know, get it down, right? With a you know, kettlebell grip in the horns, you have more control and it's a smoother transition into the ground. Um, yet another way is doing a horn grip, but in a bottoms up position. This is a little bit tougher and forces a lot more activation in your core and especially your upper back to help stabilize it while you're doing the movement. But great way, again, to spice things up. Not to mention, this will absolutely light your forearms up. That top meat part, the, uh, the brachioradialis of your forearms, it's definitely a way to help fire them up. And the last way to really spice things up with your grip on how you uh, get things positioned for the goblet squat is what I like to call a proprioceptive earthquake grip. What you do is you fold a relatively medium band tension in half, feed it through like such, and then treat these handles of the end of the band kind of like they're the horns of the kettlebell. From here, get them tucked in like such, and you have yourself a good proprioceptive goblet squat. Great reactive neuromuscular training, kind of autocorrect exercise that forces you to learn to, to increase um, upper body tension while doing a squat. So work those four in, constantly cycle through them to constantly give your body something new to adapt to. And then to further spice things up, we'll discuss the different things you can do with bands as well as the box to really kick things up a notch. Right. So on top of the different ways that you can actually grip the kettlebell itself during a goblet squat, let's talk about some other ways you can further kick things up a notch to give your body something more to adapt to. First thing I'll talk about is a band resisted goblet squat. This uh, kind of harkens back to my powerlifting days and strongman days of doing a combinated resistance work uh, using the contrast method where we would do banded, um, banded box squats, banded deadlifts, things like that, that make it to where uh, if you follow the strength curve where you mostly have greater mechanical advantage, you then pick up weight via increased tension throughout the range of motion that you're going with in the squat to make it relatively more difficult. So at the bottom of the squat, you're gonna have less tension provided from the bands, but at the top where you're more powerful and just have more greater uh, or increased mechanical advantage uh, close to that full extension of the hips, that's when that band tension kicks in and forces you to accelerate to finish the movement. So um, for that, just feed a band through Again, like a medium band through the, the horns or the handle here, cradle it. There's no real easy way to get in position here, so get into the bottom position. Get your heels down, push those knees out to help better group posterior on top of the anterior portion of your legs. Great way to really spice things up. Just be aware that you don't need too much band tension to really spice it up there. To kick it up a notch, all you need is probably a low to medium band and you're definitely gonna feel the difference. Just remember your main cues, keep your core tight, shoulders packed, joints stacked, accelerate through the movement, really emphasize that full extension of the hips with these. All right, now, Carrying on with bands, the other thing you can do, because we already discussed, you know, that, that proprioceptive earthquake squat, which if you forget already, fold it in half, feed it through, jam it in right here, and then boom. 
discuss these and how it's a great tool to help teach you to properly tension and have better overall total body control and initiation with the movement itself. But the other band technique that you can use is um, your uh, reactive neuromuscular training side of things, which if you follow me over here, I forgot where the band was. We have the hip band. Great tool that's been kind of bastardized by the booty queens out there thinking it's just for hip thrusts. Not so. Great tool to help teach you to properly push your knees out to better recruit hamstrings and glutes during the squat. So, what we have here is a band that wants to pull your knees in into basically a valgus position. We want to push it out into that um, almost knees out varus position while maintaining our heels down in our joint stack, meaning our knees on top of our ankles. All right, so benefit of this is that it forces you to keep your glutes and your hamstrings activated while obviously in this anterior load position, when you're doing it properly, your core and your lats are activated to help better stabilize that spine throughout the movement. So, hip bands, not for the booty queens, definitely a great tool to help you teach uh, yourself to better execute, initiate the movement of doing not just a goblet squat, but also any posterior loaded squat as well. And then, last tool, and by the way, you can combine these as well. All right, so last tool we're gonna use, and we already did it, is the box. You can do a goblet box squat with those knee bands or with uh, that proprioceptive earthquake uh, positioning. Ultimately, it's just one more way to really get things going and spice it up Give your body something new to adapt to when doing a goblet squat. The last thing I want for you is to think that because you're doing fundamental movements in a balanced, high intensity capacity like I teach here, that you think you have to do the same shit over and over again. That's not the case. You can mix up the different uh, positions that you're holding the kettlebell in. You can mix it up by doing um, the hip band. You can do the earthquake you know, position. You can do it to a box. You can do it regularly. There's so many different ways to do the same movement, but add a little wrinkle in to give your body something new to adapt to. It's by constantly doing that, that you will constantly see the progress in both how you perform and the way you look that you're looking for. Almost forgot one last foolproof way to dramatically improve the way you perform as well as how you look in your birthday suit is adding a three second pause during the transition from the eccentric or lowering portion of the goblet squat to the concentric lifting portion. So what we do there, real simple, while maintaining tension, keeping those heels down and knees pushed out, keep that intra-abdominal pressure, that deep belly breath in, three second pause, boom, explode up. Knees down, or knees out, heels down, boom. Knees out, heels down, hold that belly breath, boom. Just like that, again, add that in conjunction with uh, the hip band and other ways to really spice things up and give your body something new to adapt to so you're getting that linear progress that you're looking for and how you look as well is how you perform. Hey man, thank you so much for checking out today's goblet squat tutorial video. Again, if you have any further questions about the goblet squat or want me to post a different video focusing on a deep dive of a different fundamental movement, then be sure to leave that question or suggestion down in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy today's video and want me to post more like it in the future, then hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and do not leave without first grabbing your free copy of the Kettlebell Cardio Blueprint that I put together for you by clicking on the book image that you see right over there. Appreciate your time, guys. Have a good one.
Mandler, 